Hi GITV, Bobby Axeman, Hildebrand here, and today I'm going to be going over my Rebel Commander loadout for BB Wars Episode 1, A New Dawn. Alright, now this loadout is incredibly similar to a lot of other loadouts I've worn in previous tactical gearheads, but there are two new big changes. Now, first and foremost, it's my main rifle. This is an ENL AK PMC base. I've also got an M1911A1 from KWA. Now, this gun was built for me by the head of our world-class tech department, Aaron Mora, for my use throughout the year at several different BB Wars events. The base gun for this build is an ENL AK PMC, and I asked Aaron to modify it so that I could use tracer units on this because, well, tracer units are a lot of fun, and they're also great in low-light environments and CQB fields. To do that, he installed an LCT front barrel assembly, also cut down to the length I requested. Um, other external modifications include fitting and installing a 105 style gas block as well as a Midwest Industries M-Lock rail, an M-Lock vertical grip, and we've also got an AK Palm pistol grip by PTS as well as a Magpul slimline stock or Magpul SL stock. Now Aaron threw in everything but the kitchen sink for this internal build, so I'm just going to go down the list. First of all, this gun has been rewired to the rear, the angle of engagement has been corrected, this gun also features a Siege Tech Balance Gear Set, Magic Box Clear Palm Piston, Magic Box Double O-Ring Piston Head, a Magic Box 3 quarter Cylinder, a Magic Box V3 Cylinder Head, Magic Box Low Resistance Wires, Modify 120 Spring, a Tinley GT 40,000 Short Motor, a Lonex V3 Spring Guide, a 365mm Miracle Barrel, as well as Mad Bull Blue Bucking, and a Pro Win AK hop up, all making for one absolutely amazing gun build. All right, that being said, for face protection and eye protection, I have an Annex MI7 in ATAX. I love this face mask because it comes pre installed with a thermal lens, has my favorite ATAX camo on it, and makes me look ever so slightly, ever so slightly like Master Chief. So, this is my preferred uh, face mask for this game. That's what I'll be using. However, uh, for the rest of my gear, like I said before, I've got my Spectre Modular Plate Carrier. All right, now I've got three double M4 magazine pouches up front here, and it actually holds one AK Palm magazine from PTS. These are really cool mags and very durable, and I really like using them because they feed pretty darn well. Uh, now, that being said, I also have more uh, double M4 magazine pouches on the left side. I've got an additional AK magazine here, and I've got a grenade pouch. I'm going to be switching back and forth between Airsoft Innovations Tornado Grenades as well as Thunderbee Grenades. I honestly just like grenades in general. Uh, further back, I've got another utility pouch where I'm going to be rocking a Baofeng radio, which is connected to my Code Red handset. I love these handsets. They are weatherproof, and they are very, very durable, and they're also clear as a bell. Now, on my back, I've got a hydration pouch set up for a source three liter hydration bladder. Source makes great hydration bladders. They taste clean just about every time and you get a lot more flow out of this one than I found I get with just a regular store-bought Camelback. Uh, now that being said, I've also got further utility pouches on my right side and that's for a lot of subsidiary things that I might need to use on the field like a speed loader, a toolkit, Big League Chew Bubblegum, which I love a lot. Uh, so this, it's great to carry extra stuff on there like a buddy bottle of water in case someone runs out of water or is really dehydrated. It's good to have that on the airsoft battlefield, including a first aid kit, which is very, very important and which I always keep on me on the airsoft battlefield. Now, further on the back, I've also got a Condor shotgun scabbard. Now, as you can probably tell, that's to hold my axe. It actually works really well, and I've bent the back uh, a little bit in so it doesn't get tangled or hooked on anything. And overall, I found it works really well, and when I need to switch it out for a shotgun, well, I don't usually do that because I always carry my axe. I've got two pistol magazine pouches for my KWA M1911A1, which is secured in my G-Code RTI holster, which is connected to a leg panel. Now, I really like this setup from G-Code because it's really easy to access in both the CQB environment as well as outdoor field gameplay. Now, that being said, I also have on proper ATAX BDUs, which I've got a variety of patches on, well, just for fun and overall pleasure. Now, I've also got my Millspec Monkey Cool Guy Hat Deluxe. These are great hats for a variety of purposes. I use it for airsoft gameplay, as well as when I'm at the range or on the farm because it's got included earbuds, it's got a lot of Velcro space, and it's also got a little paracord handle which you can clip to your gear very easily. And it's also got zero negative space, so when I flip it around to use with my face mask, I'm not going to get shot in an open spot in the front of my head. So a very good purchase and I highly recommend this hat overall. 
Now as far as my gloves, I'm wearing Mechanics Impact 2012 gloves. I really like these a lot because they combine both dexterity and protection in a really good medium. You have rubber coating on the outside and you still have quite a degree of movement on your hands leaving them very dexterous. Now I'm also wearing for pants, I've got triple aught design pants which work great because they have a lot of pockets, they're very flexible and tough and they also have an integrated knee pad design which I really like because knee pads aren't going to go up and down, they're going to stay secure in the same place every time. Now one of my favorite pieces of gear for this tactical gear heads, and I'm sure you've noticed this over time, is I love my Under Armour Tactical Valve Sets boots. They're like walking on a cloud of awesomeness. They're incredibly lightweight, very durable, and very breathable in hot climates. Uh, now you might notice, uh, based on the footage you're seeing right now, is that there's blood on them. Well, it's not mine. It's actually fake blood from our recent BB Wars prologue, The Embers of Hate Part 2. Uh, I probably need to wash my boots, and that's all I'm going to say about that. Now I've also got my trusty tomahawk on me. This is great to have as a melee weapon. I can get those close in shush kills and bring them down to the ground. It's also really good in case I cannot access my axe quickly enough or quietly enough. And also it's great to have more than one melee weapon on the battlefield at any given time. Once again, I'm Bob the Axeman Hildebrand, and thank you for watching my Rebel Commander loadout for BB Wars Episode 1, A New Dawn, sponsored by Jag Precision, KWA, and BioVal. I'll see you on the field.